Hey Jody, it's good to see you again. Uh, I'm glad you made it back from IUS. So this is now June, what, 24th, I believe it is? So tell me what happened up in Iowa recently. Recently I had an emergency ex parte hearing with a new judge. I had filed a motion to change venue and got it out of Dallas County. So I went to Polk County hoping things would change. So my motion change venue put me in a different county and now I'm in Polk thinking things are going to be different. And I filed the emergency ex parte like you know. Okay, so tell, tell us what an emergency ex parte is. The emergency ex parte was for me to be able to sit with the judge and tell her what's going on with my case. And, uh, okay. I have an emergency. I've got a daughter that's talked about um, suicide. Okay, so you've had a daughter who's been talking about committing suicide? Yeah. Well, I, I guess that would be a good reason yeah, to have the emergency. emergency meeting. So I heard about that in this, uh, January, the first time, from friends, and then uh, in Texas. Now, this was after, not, after you, my you, hearing. No, yeah, but you were also arrested one time, and you were right. arrested for telling them about your daughter right. commit. Okay, so was right but this is, this is another time after time. This after. is right before. Um, well, my hearing was November 18th, 16th, okay. 17th, 18th last year, 2016, where the judge says he won't write me visitation to see my kids. I find out about six, eight weeks later that the daughter, one of my twins, said she wants to end her life because the judge wouldn't write her visitation. He wants the, my children. My so she wanted to see you, right. and the judge would not let her. Right. And the judge even stated, the kids want to see you, but they have to initiate contact. The kids are going through parental alienation. They're like in a Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. They can't initiate contact. They'll be retaliated against. Right. So she knows that. So she's upset and um, has stated to a friend of mine's daughter that she wanted to end her life. Um, I drive up to Iowa, go up to the counselor in her school, tell her she wants to end her life, told her who I was. Um, you know, long story short, I end up in jail. And I was the one that filed the incident, or wanted to file an incident report because they were harassing me for being at the school, even though I don't have a no contact order. So it took them three hours to even get there. They put me in jail. I get out, it's dismissed. I go back to the school a month later, a different school, but the ninth grade building. My daughter was in sure tryouts, the other twin. So I'm thinking the other, her sister would be in the cafeteria. Right. So we go in there, me and, uh, the ADA advocate, Melissa Martin, another one from Iowa that hasn't seen her kids in years, and we're looking around, and then the principal has someone take my picture, and we end up leaving. My daughter's not there, and he ran, runs us down with the school van and says, parents aren't allowed to be on the property, so I'm like, so you run them down with the school vehicle, and he's shouting at me, saying he's going to call the cops. Uh, mind you, I don't have enough This is the principal. Principal. Using wow. school property. And, and what, what, what school is this? Dallas Center Grimes in okay. Iowa. In Iowa, okay. In, it's in the town of Grimes. Okay. So uh, he said, do you want me to call the cops? And I said, go ahead. I'm. All I was doing was looking for Kylie so I could talk to her. I'm afraid this do my daughter is going to do Commit something suicide. bad. Yeah. And I won't be able to tell them I love them. I wasn't going to see my daughter cheer. The other cheer, you can't see them cheer. There's paper all over the gymnasium right. windows. And so Melissa and I went and we left and about a week later I got a notification of trespassing and I forgot what it was. Great. Notification of trespass. And this the, is Iowa. And the cop that previously arrested me and it was dismissed because the DA said there's nothing to see here, you know, okay. and found out that they were lying. Um, the same cop is now sending me a notification of trespass. And I didn't trespass public I know. contact with the Iowa Oops, husband. I'm sorry. I'm probably going to get arrested now. <laughs> I've talked to the Iowa <laughs> husband, several legislators. Um, so you're back, okay, you're talking okay, to the so, legislators. And yeah, I've talked to them about it. I've actually got a legislator, Steve Holt, that's actually listening to me, and he's an ex-cop. So he's pissed off. And so he says, I want Good. to know what's happening with this. And he just wrote, wrote me two days ago. And he wants to help me sponsor some bills. So Steve is he in the uh, Iowa? He's is he an Iowa, Iowa House rep? Of rep? Okay, so he's not federal. He's for the state. He's, he's just for the state. Got it. Okay. And so he's the only one that's really reached out. Yeah. He reached out on his own. Wow. And he's followed my story. I've talked to him a few times at the Capitol. But well, that's this, tremendous. This is great. So we're going to meet in September. Okay. So after the arrest, the arrest was January twentieth. January thirty first, I'm back up in Iowa. 
and I went up for a bond hearing. I tried to call my daughter, and they have not talked to me at that time for 720 days. She answers the phone. This is the oldest daughter? This is the youngest twin. Okay, the lot of so She's 17. Okay. And she answers the phone, which I was shocked. They haven't been answering the phone or text. Right. And she said, is it true that you went to jail? And I said, yes. And she says, why? And I said, I was trying to protect you, giving them my business card. They said they're taking my name off all of your school records. She said, why would they do that? You're still my mom. I go, well, apparently your dad thinks so illegal means I have no liberty interest in your, your health and well-being. And so the principal took my name off of their records. And this is incredible. he only is so legal because of all the false allegations. And right. basically, you know how it is. The judge says, you have PTSD, you can't mother your kids. I'm yes. Like, and he said, because I had PTSD it because, because, because of kidnapped your my kids. I know. So I'm like, okay, this is outrageous. So Kylie said, well, I said, is it true you want to do that? And she said, yes. And I said, why? Well, so she want... actually said she wanted yes. to commit suicide. Okay. Yes. And I said, why would you say that you wanted to do that? What was the reason? And she said, because the judge won't give me visitation. And I don't understand. I said, well, Kylie, I don't know if you've seen the order, hon, but it says you can initiate contact. And she goes, I can't do that. He'll never let me do that. I can't do that. And I said, I know. I I tried. So to this is something this. I've never I've never heard before. So yeah. the, the the judge has said she can have visitation. She's afraid to, and because she cannot initiate contact, she wants to commit suicide. And the judge will. He's going to be innocent, of course. He's oh gonna, yeah, he'll be innocent. Yeah, and he. Wow, this is something. And you know what? Okay. He also stated, and I think it's in my transcript, Jeff. Which judge is this, by the way? Uh, judge Husher. Okay. H U S. I think I've heard his name before. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Yeah. He sounds he like a real. He stated in the courtroom that he feared that the girls would run away. Now I guess he's a fortune teller. Why would they run away if it's just a visitation? I'm not. I didn't even ask. Well, maybe because they they were kidnapped. Yeah, like, and I never even asked for, yeah. um, never, even, never even asked for a custodial change. One second. Okay. Get so in here because you're on here. Here's your, here's your argument. Okay, come here. You want to get in? You're, you're, you're wanting to argue about the, the state. And come here. What, what are we doing? Okay. Well, we're talking about her we're situation. This is... Okay. Okay. I've been on Channel 8, Channel 4, and Channel 5. Okay, so this, um, and you're a constitutional, uh, you teach the Constitution. I'm not an expert. I don't think there are any experts. Because, right. you know, you, you get into that, that whole uh, ideological principle thing. Right. It's, how, it's hard to say who's an expert on what. Right. But, but one of the things, I mean, so just to let you know, um, with Jody, she's had four kids kidnapped. Maybe you've heard her story. Uh, her ex-husband has kidnapped her kids two at a time. One of the, the kidnappings, it was a assisted by a PTA member and uh, so now um, she had custody of the kid she was a great mom and now she hasn't seen one set of twins for almost two years and yeah, two and a half years. two and a half years and then the other two um, it's been three almost and three and a half so anyway that that's why she's been she, she's actually one of the people that has been fighting for legislation to change uh, the parental alienation laws and the way things are done in the courts She's, she's the one who, uh, recently she had a proclamation signed, uh, there was a proclamation signed in Pennsylvania that she drafted for Iowa. Iowa didn't do it. My hometown city of Erie, Pennsylvania, Ryan Bizarro, the representative there, signed it. And now it's gone up to the city council signed it. It's gone up to the uh, Pennsylvania state legislator. And even the governor signed it. So, I mean, they're trying to do something. It's raising awareness right now, raising awareness right now but right. you can understand the pain that she feels as a mom who's had her kids kidnapped from her and, and everybody says either tries to blame her or says well you can't see your kids and she has one daughter who has been talking about committing suicide because she wants to see her her mom but and the, the judge won't write this so my yeah. daughter wants to end her life so that's what we're just talking about but can, can they not here's my question you know in order for a, a judge most judges because i happen to know a lot of judges you're going to have to be able to prove immediate danger in order to keep someone from seeing their children. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that, that, yeah, sure, they can set, I've seen in the past, they can set special conditions on, well, you need to have a supervised visit, or it needs to be, you probably heard this, it needs to be at a CPS office, or it needs to be here, it needs to be here, there. Right. You know? But the, the, the whole issue that you have to look at is how these laws are being applied whether they're being applied on predictions, based on predictions, <laughs> well, that's yes. right? yeah. or whether they're being applied based on factual evidence of right. things that have happened, or 
if there's immediate danger. Right. I mean, in so many cases in society, and not just on the child aspect, in all our laws, we want to believe that we can predict the future just with 100% accuracy, and we right. can. Right. And in many cases, we criminalize people based on what we are, uh, based on a fear. Right. That we, we can prove anything. Well, that's what the judge said in my case. He says, we fear that the, the kids are going to run away again. I said, why would they run away if I'm just visiting them? I'm not asking to reverse care. I'm just asking to get them out of there for the time being, because all the parental alienation experts state, get them out for 90 days, get them into the programming, and um, they'll, you know, get them away from the alienator. You have yeah. to. So they're even in a situation where you have a normal, well, kind of halfway normal visitation, sometimes when he was just coming to see him, he only saw him every 12 to 18 months. But if he had him five days, it took him three days to correct what he just did. Yeah. I mean, they would be, you know, I don't have to listen to you. That kind of so, thing. you know, as being ex-military, you probably understand oh. some of the dynamics of being uh, brainwashing, the, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. So, yeah. you can imagine, I mean, this happens regularly oh, throughout the country. Let's tell them what my ex thinks he is. Oh, <laughs> oh that's right. His, his, love this. Her ex portrays himself as a, as a former Navy SEAL. <laughs> he even buys the epaulets. I was never a Navy SEAL. Yeah. I was in the military. He wasn't either. He's never been How would the Navy SEALs feel about this guy being an imposter, and portraying he used, himself? He used American Airlines to kidnap my kids, and that's who he's a pilot for. But he used to buy Epilus at Navy and all this. He's a Navy SEAL, but he's a pilot? Oh, yeah. that's, okay. that's yeah. a weird well, it's, it's possible. He, he, he is a, a pilot, trident. but he's not a Navy he SEAL. He wore a trident on his... Hi. Yeah. Anyway, you, anyway, but you understand the, the dynamics of brainwashing, especially, you know, we were talking about earlier some of the issues dealing with marriage and divorce and how oftentimes you'll get an attorney that will, I don't know whether they advise or not, but it's becoming much more common, the silver bullet technique to say that, you know, I need to get a restraining order because I fear for something and it gives the mother or the father advantage in custody issues. And then you, you, you just start to rearrange, you start to erase history, you know, and that's why she's that's, got that's that, happens. she's got the hat erased mom. Yeah. And so, you know, what we've been looking at is how do we, ex how do we address this the, from a legislative the, issue? The best way to address it, and I don't know if you can make this happen, I don't know what kind of relationship you have with your ex or whatever. Oh, none. But, he won't even answer my phone calls. Um, if, if you could somehow establish a relationship where y'all could come to terms, that kind of takes the judiciary out of the, out of the Right. Way. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't know how difficult that would be to do, but that's a great step to take. If you can find common ground, just some, just a little common ground. Right. Well, that's the one thing I did with the emergency ex parte. I was trying to get that across to the judge. If he would just sit down with me and let's hash this out, you know, we don't have to keep going on. But my kids should not have to be without a mother. My kids should not be afraid that my college daughter gets invited to a college graduation. I missed out. I missed out on things that I'll never get back. And isn't this an unjust enrichment where he has everything and I have nothing but chihuahuas? I have nothing. Yeah. And I've spent $100,000. That was three times what I made. Well, I'm so broke now, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then the judge, because he kept delaying my hearings, I lost my job. My UPS, I had a great job at UPS. They said, you have three days to get back or we can't, your FMLA's run out. What do you want to do? I said, well, my kids need me more than UPS. I'm going to have to quit. I'm 51 years old. How the hell am I going to get a job? I wish I could make some sort of money, but right. so, I'm trying to fight, and I'm going to try to put a federal uh, I, lawsuit together for this, yeah. but it takes time. All this stuff takes time. It does. It does. I think one of the things you mentioned, though, finding common grounds, when you look at some of the behaviors behind this, it's hard to find common ground in terms of the narcissist. Right. And, and I'm, I mean, you, you know the different personalities. Oh, I've met a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I mean, they're, they're, sometimes you have the people that they are bound to determine for whatever reason, I make myself look better by cutting him down or her down, or you know, it doesn't, you know, the, the kids be damned, yeah. I'm going to be their hero. Well, and you, you, you really, you have to make it about the kids. Right. That's what you have to make it about. Right. It has to be about the children, and I've seen some CPS cases where the kids were yanked, just yanked, you know, and, and it's it's very destructive, like you were saying to the children, mm -hmm. to not have that balanced relationship and stuff like that. Yeah, and CPS, uh, they do that parental alienation. Mine's, yeah, mine's strictly you, parental alienation. You have to CPS try to encourage that. CPS say, your parents anyway, you are can. this, your parents are that, and then the foster parents do the Later, same sorry. thing. Some of these kids get in foster care. Foster care parents are talking about the biological parents. 
Man, I'm not a big fan of foster care. I think children should be left anytime they're placed, if, if at all humanly possible, they should be placed with relatives. I think it's a much better situation. They still have contact with the rest of their family that they've grown up. It's not such a traumatic experience. I'm not saying it's not traumatic, but it's not as traumatic as being placed in the home of strangers. So what do you that's very that's gotta be very traumatic for children. So one thing I'm trying to do is get mental health providers in Iowa, well, in Texas too, but mental health providers to get educated on this. Because you also have, you've also got guardian ad litems that are lawyers, and in yeah. Iowa they're pushing for them all to be lawyers, and they shouldn't be. Right. And then they go in there, they don't have a forensic psychology degree. Why are they doing it? And I asked the judge in Texas, Judge Navarez, how many kids are you taking back to your chambers? He said, oh, quite a few. I go, why? What did you do before you became a judge? He said, I was a CPA. Oh, so are you doing their math homework? He goes, why are you asking them what parent they want to live with? And I said, don't you think they're going to take the parent that just brought well, them here? how old are they? I'm just curious. Oh, any age. Any age. Well, I know, after, I know there's an age of consent in oh, Texas yeah. for children. Uh, I forget if it's 12 or 13. Don't that, call me on that. You know, that's, know that, that's, of that. that's kind of a crazy lie in itself as well. well because, yeah. I mean, but who... It, I, is our common law. Yeah. Right. But let me ask, okay. I, but when they're coached, when yeah. they're coached, no matter if they're 8, 4, 12, when they're coached and then you have the alienating dad or mom sitting outside of the chambers right. and the alienating person brought that child, they don't believe anyone's going to help them. They don't believe that judge is going to help them. So they choose the alienator. Yeah. Right? right. So you're never going to get a true, you know, their, what do you call, authentic self to tell the judge well the, the way that one person and, and you know we mentioned the movie divorce court uh wendy archer now wendy perry she's remarried she's in this area but she was featured in that movie and what happened to her was incredible the way that she says it it's as if when when, when you're speaking to the child that's with an alienating parent it's as if they've got a gun to the back of the head knowing that if they say the false word, it's going to go off. The repercussions are going to be that bad. So when they're before a judge and they don't have that sense of protection, that sense of, I can speak freely, this is what happens. See, Jody's what I, a good mom. That's, oh, that was the best. I was, I well, mean, yeah. <laughs> not the best in the good, world. But, I mean, yeah, of yeah. course I made mistakes, but I didn't make any mistakes that deserve this. I don't deserve this. So one of the things that, you know, from a, from a constitutional point and everything, you know, when we were talking earlier, and I mean, I don't know how you address the issue like this. From a constitutional point, it's really hard to address because, you know, the Constitution does say we have state rights. Those states have a right to have a representative center for governors pass common law, and that's what we're talking about. And, of course, yeah, you've got the concept of, well, the Constitution's not protecting me. The Constitution is actually designed to protect you from from the federal government. That was an, and from the state government, which this is a state authority, absolutely. But it's more it leans to be more of a common law problem. Yeah. It's not really a constitutional rights violation. The Constitution allows it, but does that make it just? Does that make the law just? No, just because no, just because it says it's a state's right does not make a law just. Right. Okay? Right. That that does that comes back to the people and the people in your communities that elect people and get them in office and they pass these, these laws. So, so yeah, the, but you're right. It's going to take education. If you want to change something, I've said this before, you educate, 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 educate the masses. You know, and I'll tell you what, that's been, how you change society. There have been very few people like Jody. There have been some that I know, but Jody is up at every legislative meeting. I think in Iowa, everybody knows her by name at this point. They walk yeah. through the I mean, house <laughs> the Yeah, house. I mean, <laughs> she's met governors and everything else. But, um, so, to go back to something that you said, and, and, and I will get back to this in just a moment, sure. Jody, but, you know, we talked about the due process clause of the 5th and the 14th. Now, the 5th Amendment grants due process against the federal government, right. So that, but the 14th deals more particularly with the state. Yes. So, that's why, you know, when I was arguing the due process clause, whether you agreed with me or not, right. I mean... Uh, there is still something that if an agency is state-sponsored and can take either your life, your liberty, or your property without due process, we're supposed to be protected from that. And yet, the statutes that we pass often permit the states to violate that. Yes. So that's why I said, you know, if we go back to the original, 
we should have those protections from, as your, as your point was, and I agree with that completely, yeah. and, and the problem is that many of our laws are now unconstitutional, so yes. we have to abolish them. That's, or, <laughs> that's what we need to do. Yeah. We need to start abolishing laws that are unconstitutional, and there's a numerous, 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 a ton of them. Yeah. Uh, most people, you know, they got this, it, it's funny when you hear the, you hear so many people say, I have constitutional rights. You'll hear so many people say I that. I know that. And I explain to them, you're really dumb yeah. because you haven't read the Constitution. Yeah. The, the preamble doesn't grant, what, what rights yeah. does it grant you? What rights do the articles grant yeah. you? Yeah. The only rights that you have are inalienable rights and yeah. they're not even, uh, it can't yeah. even really call them constitutional. They're just reaffirmed in yeah. the Constitution right. that you're born with a voice so right. you're entitled to have a voice. You're well, born with free thought so you're entitled, you're yeah. born with free will so you're entitled to have free will. Right. The Constitution actually pits it actually pits the left, the hard left ideology against the hard right ideology. Mm -hmm. That's actually what it does. Right. It pits them against each other. So that they'll, if they try to become, I think if they, either side tries to become too powerful, they'll almost self-destruct. The only way they can really become too powerful is when they start agreeing on too many issues. <laughs> then they become the same entity. Yeah. This, oh, is no. the, this is one of the problems we have with the, well, not me personally, but the Republican Party has to be with the rhinos agreeing with Democrats too much. There's not enough friction there. Yeah. We need more friction there. Right. We need more arguments. We need more reasoning. We need more people. Hey, you're going to have to make a case to prove this. Right. We're not just going to take your opinion on it. Right. You're going to have to make a case to prove it. Right. And that's what we need. We don't need the, we don't need this, hey, you know, the, the, these dog and pony shows and these popular contests. Hey, this guy's going to be, uh, you know, uh, king of the dance for the night. Well, that's great, but that doesn't get, even, get us anywhere when it comes to law. Right. You know, so the, the, this, this idea of electing cheerleaders is, is kind of mind-boggling to me. Yeah. Well, the guy that's but helping me do. do my federal case, he's going to be naming stuff basically called it defective practices of law. There you go. That's, so that's, that's, that's where I was leaning on the when I said I'd give got, you an argument. He's got a Texas case um, right now yeah. that he already did that with Nate. And you can also look at the funding. Okay, that's that's what I was going to point out. Okay. If you figure out the funding, how it's going from the federal like all chart. the way down. Right. It's a little flow chart all the way down. And all those arguments that you gave me inside, those were all great legitimate arguments. But that's all they are arguments. They want facts. Right. Now you come with a flow chart to show money going down, and then this is your argument. This is causing this, and this is causing right. this, and this is causing this, and this is causing because this. Because if I go and into Steve, now you have an argument because you have right. to be able. Can I can I interject here just so, a moment? So yeah. I, I, I'll let yeah. you get right back. But I was talking with Senator Bob Hall from Texas. You know him, and you also know, know Senator Don Huffines. Know. You know, so I was at a town hall with him the other day, and uh, you know Don Huffines has written some tried to get some great legislation passed, as did Senator Hall. Yeah. But actually it was Senator Hall who said, talked about the federal funding for these right. issues and we need to roll these things back. So what exactly, what you're talking about, there are people, yeah. now granted they're the minority of people, but they're aware of them. And right. uh, I think that, you know, once you start to see the funding issues and, you know, what Jody was mentioning earlier about the Social Security yeah. funding, um, that would be a great great place to start to go with it but anyway yes. i'm sorry i didn't, I didn't mean this no because no, i thought that was unconstitutional if we don't we're not even told our social security might be helping take children from parents whether it's cps yeah. or like my case where they're flipping us to non-custodial or there's men and women out here all of both genders are paying child support if they're non-custodial no i'm not because yeah. i just refuse i said i'm not doing it he makes three times what he's stating on this record I said, I'm looking at a 1040, it says it makes 29000 29, but he's an American Airline International pilot, and he's lying. So if you, Your Honor, make me pay child support, then you're you're in trouble. <laughs> so he didn't make I don't know. Yeah, you, the, the whole civil law thing, you, you really need to get you a good civil law attorney for that family uh, practice attorney. I think, though, that what the other thing that you were mentioning in there as well, as far as the law is concerned, I mean, why are we granting the government any power, any jurisdiction in areas in which they should have no jurisdiction. You know, so we were talking about we were talking about the marriage issue and, and I've you know I got remar I mean, I, remarried I several to get out of marriage completely. Right. Completely get out of it and send it back to the churches. And you know I'm old enough to remember you. I don't know I'm I'm, not, I'm gonna say you are but okay. I'm not trying to insult you. <laughs> no that's okay. But I'm old enough to remember back before Doma 
back before all this government intervention in marriage, and I remember it wasn't a perfect system. No, right. it absolutely was not. Right. But it was a thousand times better, better than what we than have what today. We got today. Exactly. I can guarantee you that. The yeah. churches did, compared to what we have today, the churches did an outstanding job right. managing marriage. Do you not think, though, that perhaps, and I hate to say it like this, I've been in the church, I was yeah. a missionary with the church, I've gone to seminary, everything else, I helped to pastor right. a church. From my perspective, and, and this is a generalization, uh, many churches have compromise to adapt to culture rather than maintaining their integrity with with biblical teaching so yeah. i mean it, it's been a shame to see that happen it has and uh you know it, you should put your church your religion before your government wow. you should put your scriptural teaching before well, that that's what i'm saying yeah, exactly yeah. exactly so now if you're people, gonna go spend forever yeah wasn't wouldn't forever be more important than Temporary? Yeah, right, temporary. Right, yeah. 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 I hear you. Anyway, so go ahead. I'll, I'll let you continue talking. I want to, so I want to know, like, a month from today, I'm going to be meeting with that U.S. congressman. I don't want to say his name on here because I've got some people that will sabotage it. Right. But anyway, he's from my state. Okay. So <laughs> um, I want question? to know what uh, how to bring this up, how to argue it. Or if you, on, on the constitutional level? Yeah, I know you said the flow chart. The I'd flow like chart on the funding that, would be great, showing because when you, when you look at, you know, even though our money is sent to the federal government, sent to the states and stuff, people don't want to. Do you really want to affect spending? Ninety percent of that money is spent on the local levels. Well, I'm throwing that number up there. It's a large percentage, okay? But it's a very large percentage is spent on the local levels, and. Yeah, and make no mistake, there are people in Washington, D.C. that want that money spent on the local levels so that they can control exactly what we're talking about right here. Yeah. They get to determine the difference between right and wrong. They get to determine the difference between good and evil. And, it, you know, and unfortunately, you know, good and evil, what like, like, we'll say ethics, for example. The ethics of a anarchist compared to a libertarian compared to a Tea Party member, compared to a Democrat, compared to a Republican, compared to a communist, their ethics scales, you're talking about, that's a broad spectrum of scale right, right. there, baby. Right. Okay, you can go with that. You can do a 180 in just those those few names I named right there. Right. So, yeah, it's important to remember, that's why the funding, I'm against, I would like to cut the funding just like Mr. Hall said, because no matter which one of those we get, say, you get the anarchy guy, guy, or you get the communist guy, or you get the Republican guy, or you get the Democratic guy. Anything they do, then they impose their beliefs on society. Anything they do, are they not going to be going against the beliefs of a percentage of that population? Yeah. Doesn't matter which one's yeah. in power. Yeah. There's going to be somebody that they're offending. There's going to be somebody that they're infringing on their rights. Now, what they, now, Respond to this argument then. So I'm one of the people that think, okay, the family is a is an important unit in society. It's foundational. The foundational comes sure. before the church. The foundation, the family comes. I'm sorry. The family comes before the church. It comes before the government. It's the first local eco government, first local economy. The family unit. So family formation is extremely important as far as if you want to see children develop to be responsible citizens right. to uh, to have opportunities in life i mean that goes back to the, the simple fact that we we need to live in a free society mm -hmm. right? and, and I, I can't express that enough because no matter what we do and, and we really need to underscore and i mean underscore and italicize our three base beliefs in common law in this country because so many and so many times we get confused people want to, and we're, we're taught this, by the way, we're taught to go, oh, you're violating my constitutional rights. Why are we taught that? Why are, why are people taught that by government? Why are they taught that in school? They're taught that in school so that they will embrace, right? Uh, they, they will embrace one government yeah. ruling over them. Right? Yeah. That's why you're taught that. Yeah. Because they want your responses to be that. Yeah. They want your response mechanisms to trigger that. So, and that, that's just what we've been taught. Our knee-jerk reaction is, hey, you're violating our constitutional rights, which means what? Government grants me my rights, 
So therefore, government is all powerful. Well, yeah, right. It, it, yeah, they even dress the God-given rights, right? The inalienable right. rights, right, right. <laughs> but they're so, supposed to be securing the blessings so, of liberty, right? So, so what we need is we need more freedom and liberty in this country because right now we're seeing so much violence in this country, and I, I'm sure everybody's aware of this. You can see it on the evening news every single night. Our economy is not as great as everybody's saying it is. Obviously, there are some people living in poverty enough that they're willing to go out and steal and shoot to get it. Right. Okay. And then we've got other people that are just marching in the streets and, and doing crazy stuff. I mean, we saw a congressman, some congressmen get shot at at the Capitol not long ago, right? Yeah. Right. Why? Because of an ideology. Right. Because of an ideology. That's why that happened. And then you know we see we see uh, the president, even the president of the United States coming out, you know, wanting to close the, uh, go ahead. You can come up. Oh. And then uh, some I, people are in poverty, the some borders. people are in poverty, like myself. I'm right. below the 125% poverty level. Even a judge said that because, you know, I was not a job, but I got a job because of the injustices of the stupid judges. Poverty's a state of you know what? I, I, you know, and I always say this to everybody. Me a job. If you got, if you got a room and you got three square meals a day and you're healthy, guess what? Everything else is supplemental. Okay, I can't not stress that enough. I have been to so many different countries around the globe, and people in this country, I hear them say, "I'm living in poverty," and I'm like, "You have no flipping idea what poverty is." Okay, when you take off your Nikes and put your cell phone down and you know, yeah. do all these other That's things, yeah. then maybe I'll start getting on your side a little bit. But no, as long as your heels are lighting up when you're walking down the road and you're talking on that cell phone, don't give me the poverty argument because I ain't buying it. <laughs> this is why our, my, our kids now did not have time. <laughs> my kids left because I took their phones away yeah. for a week. And they're like, you know, they're attached. You can't go into a restaurant without seeing family of four and they're all looking at the phone. So my kids are like, oh my gosh, you took our phone. That's our lifeline. What a mean mom. I'm so mean. So four days later, they're on a plane and now the, the story got embellished. And mom beats us with the phone if we try to call dad. I'm like, I didn't even know his number. He hadn't even talked to him in three yeah. years. And I'm like, what? Why did we get so big? And then and these kids think they're entitled. So now I was traded for a used Mercedes and used BMW. Because they thought mom can't give it, she's gonna give us a 2008 Chevy Impala. Yeah. Well, they don't want that, they'll be embarrassed. You know, like, oh my God. You know, they had a really great law this last legislative session in Texas that I supported. I don't think it passed though. It was about the, the divorced parents, 50 50. I think the the equal parenting, yes. Equal parenting. 453, law. but it didn't pass. It didn't pass. Didn't that was out. a great law. And I don't know why that didn't pass. Well, I, I can I really, tell you why that didn't pass. Because I cannot I can tell understand you sure. why I'll tell you my part. that wasn't a bipartisan thing. Well, I'll, tell well, you my, I'll tell you my part why it didn't pass in Iowa. And I don't know about Texas, but in Iowa it didn't pass because they're pushing it through and it's going to be a vague law. They're leaving so many loopholes in this. So nursing mothers are going to lose their kids immediately. Like say you get divorced and she just had that baby. Nope, the judge didn't say, he gets them a week, then you. Well, what's she going to do if she's nursing the kid? You know what their answer was? Father's rights in Iowa? Pump milk. Oh, you want me to pump for you. So when we're not having the kid, we got to work for the man. And he might have been the one cheating on us. And, but, uh, you know, you can't, that milk isn't good for more than 48 hours. So what, is he going to come back and be in, in okay, so in, in my life? So in Texas, what happened was a couple of things. Number one, the Texas Family Law Foundation, which, as you've heard, the Texas Anti-Family Law Foundation, I don't know much that they support that actually is pro-family, right. but um, and, and they say that they're that they're a lobbyist group for the family for the family bar. So I mean, you understand where their interests are. They opposed it. Second thing is is that what they said, uh, Steve, I forget his name, who's a, who's one of their spokesmen for it, but he was saying that um, Steve Bresman, um, he said he was receiving he and his wife, I believe, were receiving death threats, and they had a couple of Facebook posts that a couple of people did. So so. This is, this is actually what happened. I've seen the correspondence about some of this stuff. So he voted because he received death threats? No, he, 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 he oh, okay. said he, I, he, I was, he was the committee <laughs> chair. Yeah. And he would not let the legislation go through. The video is online. And he was chatting to people because this type of behavior was unacceptable. James White, who was sponsoring it, I'm not sure what happened to him. I know, I know James. There are, I mean, I hear stories, but I'm not going to spread gossip because I don't know what the, the real true story is. But that was part of the reason. And the reality is, if the, if the, if the, Family Bar opposes something, they have a lot of say. I mean, the Texas Family Law Foundation, they go down there as if there's experts in something, and they have stated on film, I have got it out there, 
we pride ourselves as being the lobbyists for the Texas Family Bar or something like that. It's Texas Family Law. This is what they're saying. I mean, so the, the, the lobbyists are now becoming. Texas Family Bar is completely different than lobbying for Texas families. Let me make that clear. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That is the point. Let's make that clear. But yeah. Joe, I think are going to get any lawyers yeah. should be in the legislature. But so, well, because attorneys, no disrespect to any of my attorney friends out there, but yeah. they act in their own self interest. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, their own self interest are Clients are secondary. Yeah. Yeah. Their self interest as far as police officers, all my police friends out there, they act in their own self interest first and enforcing and protecting the public is a secondary notion. Yeah. Okay. I, I've got friends, tons of friends with police officers. Yeah. Okay. And they're taught, they're taught to do this because cities are worried about getting sued, police officers are worried about getting shot. I mean, it's just the nature of the beast. It's the way the system functions. Sure. Yeah. But well, that's why one reason why the That's police. why I'm all about open carry and, and constitutional carry. Because if, if history teaches us nothing else, it teaches us that unless we are Bill Gates or one of those types of people, we can't carry a policeman in our pocket everywhere we go. And most murders that are committed are committed within, you know, I believe I read once it was like a are committed within 120 seconds of the confrontation. Yeah. How many cops are going to show up, like if somebody were to walk up right now and start trying to kill us, how many cops are going to be here in 120 seconds? Right? Yeah. None. I, won't, but I, I doubt, you know. Right. And I don't know if that number's accurate, but, I mean, the, the truth is, you can watch cops every Friday or Saturday night that's still on TV or watch some of these police deals, and, you know, they're showing up because somebody's called in yeah. because a crime has already taken place. Yes. And that's yeah. the important <laughs> concept to remember. Well, yeah. right? it's, it's already it's happened. Yeah. So now like we're mine. just trying to catch the perpetrator. Right. Like mine, too, when my kids are being kidnapped, then you call these police, they're still looking out for their best interest or whatever. They don't want to be held responsible for going to get our kids or bringing them back in case our custody order is a forged document. <laughs> right. But a sheriff friend of mine in Iowa said if people just uh, pull their head out and on your document, you don't put every other weekend. We don't know what weekend you're on. And then put in uh, that the law enforcement office is not held responsible should that be a forged document. But also to get not just a signature from a judge, you go get a certified for 20 bucks. A sealed, and people don't know that's available. Get it over yeah. so, so, but, you know, because that's a, it should be a crime to kidnap your kids, right? You agree that the yeah. PTA lady should be in Now, now actually, Joe, do you school. like this? Because it's, it's a deep, there's a DA that's running, for, a guy who's running for the DA out in Denton. His name is Brett Bowen. You'll like him. He's the one who actually helped uh, Brett Hohenberg get his kids back and oh, kidnapped yeah. up. Uh, I've got his video that I'll stick up online sometime here soon. But everything that she speaks about, she speaks from experience. It's right. stuff that she's gone through. And I mean, when, when people, when she talks, sometimes people think she's bitter, she's crazy, there's no possible way. This she must be a lunatic or insane. But the stuff that you, that you see and that you hear and that she goes through, you're like, what in the world? How screwed up is a system? And our laws that enable it and say that this is the right I thing mean, to do. Well, so crazy. I was just in Iowa at the Capitol three weeks ago. They had a, a CPS oversight committee meeting. And like I said before, for everyone that you know, thinks I have a CPS case, I don't. CPS isn't involved in mine other than they won't help my kids that are being mentally abused. And so I went up there with some other people. We wanted to hear what was going on because we were going to talk to CPS the following day and talk to them about, hey, CPS worker so-and-so didn't take do my intake. They said that my kids aren't in imminent danger, but they are. Okay, so in that oversight committee meeting, the Republicans and Democrats are yelling at each other, they're yelling at CPS, two, two young girls that were 16 years old got taken from CPS and then put in foster care. Both girls died three months apart. One girl weighing 80 pounds, found in a diaper, the other one weighing 56 pounds. They're and how old were care. the kids? 16. 16. And there are so both of these girls, one was in the city where my kids live, West Des Moines, and then the other little girl was, was about 30 miles away. So anyway, I, they have an adjudication judge sitting right there, and he's talking about, oh, I like to take the kids, if they take them out of the home, give them to family, like you said. Yep. So when we go out of the bill, we go outdoor, I follow him with some stuff, and I say, can I talk to you? And I show him my daughter's Twitter. Yeah. I mean, like 10 of them. And I said, what do you think about that? He goes, well, she's in imminent danger. Oh, my God. 
it. So I showed him about corona donation and I had some my custody order. So what do you think about this custody order? He goes, you don't have visitation. I go, no. He goes, why wouldn't you have visitation if you've never been found unfit? I go, exactly. Good. I don't know. That would have been my first question so he's if like, I was a judge. I'm not even a judge. A so he goes, well, what are you doing about this? I said, well, tomorrow I've got an emergency ex parte with a judge. He goes, okay, well, you go ahead and plead your case because this is imminent danger. This kid's in trouble. I go in there and she says she's not in imminent danger. Now this guy sees this all the time. Yeah. Kids at all. I'm just like, this is insanity. So what are they going to do if son, my daughter, God forbid, does something? Right. Are they going to listen to them? And now they're talking it's always them. after a tragedy takes place that everybody gets up and armed. And also Not about preventing the tragedy, it seems yeah. like. It was like Liliana right with CPS last year. But just keep in mind, what's going on here is part of the process. When, right. When it gets painful for people, people have to stand up. They have to have their voices heard, and you have to create change. And that's the society we live in. Yeah. We have the ability to change it anyway. Mm -hmm. Every day when we can wake up, right. we can go any direction we want. Right. The society that we live in, it makes it, it all comes back to us, the individuals, making those cognitive choices to say, Am I going to do something positive today and try to create positive change? In the world? Yeah. That's what it all comes back to. So, good luck. I, I even go. did that in the jail. These three girls were laying there, and I said, Do you have children? They go, Yeah. I said, What are you doing to hear that? I don't have my kids, and you're doing this crap. And I educated them right there. I said, I got a captive audience. There you go. Thank Good you so much, Mr. Harris. It was hey, wonderful to meet you. We, Robert mean, Harris. Robert Harris. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Appreciate a hat. Erased mom. Yes. Um, and I know that you had that at the Parental Alienation Symposium. And I know you looks like you've got some proclamations or something like that in your yep. hand, too. By it's the way, Mayor and Grimes. That's wonderful. And show the city of Erie. To, being this is where my kids go to school. Good, good. Oh, here you go. This and the city of Erie, that's where, <laughs> there you go. I love it. That's <laughs> my hometown. And I got the city council. So why don't you tell... So these oh, that's are right. thanks to Lori Nicholson. Right. You know. And you know, Ryan Bizarro yeah. has now also taken to the House, which unanimously approved the Parental Alienation Awareness Week, and the governor signed it as well. So, yeah. I mean, there's a lot going on there. Awesome. But why don't you go ahead and tell us about your hat, okay. how people can get it if they want one. Okay. And also, well, let's take oh, a look at the... We'll go look at that, too. Okay. So I'll just say, the shirts, if you want them, um, they're on booster.com. So just go to booster.com slash warriors against parental alienation okay or just go to booster.com and type in parental alienation you'll find me okay um they're twenty dollars you know plus shipping and i'm just looking to get 14 minimum print minimum so they'll print them and then i don't make a whole lot after that but what i do make i put back into making uh, up writing these people and you yeah. know, sending letters and ink yeah. and all that okay or traveling you know to the capital to okay. speak um, okay, the hat, you can get Erase Mom, Erase Dad, Erase Grandpa, Grandma, whatever. That's at, uh, let's see, Erased No More, all together, Erased No More dot Big Cartel dot com. Big, dot big cartel dot com. Yeah, erased No More dot Big Cartel dot com. And you can get a hat, a uh, white, or, an, or the Royal Blue. Royal Blue is like parental alienation color. Okay. Um, you can get a tote. Uh, this uh, kind of says the what ABCs. You, what you? This one is uh, my own, but they will do them. She's got the. This is a little more, so I didn't put it on there. Okay, go ahead and. Uh, if you ask for this, uh, you know, just maybe show it, whatever. Okay. I can put that on my group. Um, they'll print it up. Okay. Um, they put everything under my name, so okay. you just say you to be the Let's take a look at the decal on your car, too. And then I'm going to have to take off. Oh, here. yeah. Okay, and then oh. Lori Nicholson um, created uh, decals in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. This guy's doing decals for cars. So you can have, okay. the, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Let's go take a look at yours. I'm trying to think of the name. You can have them with or without names. Okay. So yours is with your four children, is that correct? Parental alienation is child abuse in honor of Kaylin, Ian, Courtney, and Kylie. And you can get them made, you know, with specific names on it, or you can get them made just like this, with no name. Okay. Some and people have uh, gag orders, and they don't want to even put something on their car. But got it. And then also, too, that's going to be available for grandparents, I believe, is yeah. from what I she told me. I can't remember the price, but I'm thinking there's six or seven. I was thinking it was eight, but I'm not sure. It, I'm not maybe positive. Maybe it's eight for the... Personalized, I'm not sure. Okay. And that includes shipping. So you can get a hold of Lori Nicholson. It's 
L-A-U-R-I-E Nicholson, and she's an Erie PA, and she has a guy doing those, so okay. they're really nice. Wonderful. Well, listen, I do have to go. Thank you so much again for the update. Uh, I know we um, didn't quite get the whole thing done here because we had a special guest that came and talked with us. Oh, yeah. But that was great. Anyway. He was going to give us ideas, so. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. I know he gave us some good ideas, yeah. too, so right. thanks so much, Jody. We'll right. see you.